My name is Vivian Ugaldi. I am an English major writing specialization, and then I'm a Basque studies minor and a cinema and media studies minor. Incredible. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us on the Artist Spotlight. First thing I wanted to ask you was just, how has the semester been treating you so far? Uh, like I said earlier, uh, I'm going to be graduating in the spring, so senioritis is kicking in early, and I'm sure all of my professors hate me, but it's fine. <laughs> so yeah. how's it going with the course load? Uh, it's all right. The Basque minor is pretty lax because not a lot of people do it. And there's like four faculty in the department. And I am very familiar with two of the four because one of them did the USAC program with my uncle in like the 80s. So I am the only person in one of my classes. It's it's fine. There's zero curve. So that's great. <laughs> nice. Okay, so how have you been writing this semester? Have you continued working on any stuff, or was this last piece kind of a, one of the last major things for you? Um, so I have my own website that I try to like publish on frequently, just to kind of have my own portfolio. Um, I haven't really been doing that. I probably should do that. Um, but I'm also president of comedy club, so we do a lot of sketch writing and stand-up writing and stuff for that. And then... Um, I'm an English major, so I'm in writer's workshops, so I'm doing stuff for that. I wouldn't say that that's, like, my most, uh, prideful work, but, uh, it's happening, so that's fine. And is there, like, any particular genre you want to keep going on with? Like, do you mainly focus on comedy, or do you go with other ones, too? Yeah, so, it kind of happens that way. Like, I, I am very obsessed. Like, probably not in a good way obsessed with comedy. Mm. Um, so I tend to write in that genre a lot. And I try to force myself to not write in that genre. And then somehow it kind of just always ends up being that way. Like, um, I think it was my sophomore year. I was in a writer's workshop and I tried historical fiction for the first time. And immediately it turned into comedy. I was like, ah, that's a good joke. And then I was like, oh, this is not historical fiction in any way. <laughs> so it just kind of like morphs that way all the time. But I guess like if you write what you're comfortable with, and it works, like it works, right? Don't mess with it. Um, I was just talking about this with a friend of mine, and we were talking about a song that you would want to have played at your funeral. And somebody was picking like really beautiful music and something, and somebody else was like, <laughs> they picked like a Queen song or something, and I was like, this is this needs to happen. Like, where can I put this? And so for my 306 class with a. Uh, Chris Koch. I don't know if you've ever had him for a writer's workshop, but excellent professor. Um, I've been kind of working with the ideas of like comedy and death and comedy and grieving and like these really dark things that mix together with comedy. And so all of that stuff, like I wanted it to be serious. I wanted it to be heavy and sad. And then it just didn't end up that way. <laughs> and I was like, oh, maybe I should like go to therapy about this or something like this seems <laughs> like something I need to talk about, but it ended up working. So that was good. So yes, you were published. I was in edition 71. Somehow. <laughs> in edition 71 volume two, which was spring semester mm -hmm. and it was diary of a sixth grader. Yes. How do you feel about being published? How, how, um, how did that get across to you? Well, so <laughs> The origin of the piece itself, I've been, like, working with for a few years. So, originally, the idea started as stand-up. I tried to do a set with the same material. Did not go well in any way. Um, and so, I was like, okay, maybe it's not really stand-up worthy. Maybe it needs to be a sketch. Try to write a sketch. Also, super not good. <laughs> um, so, then I was like, okay, maybe this just should be a short story. Um, I tend to write in first person a lot, so I try to do it that way, but I really liked this idea of like a younger person talking to their future self, and so the idea of it just being very melodramatic and overdramatic and just like, I mean, there, somebody always goes through a phase of that when they're a kid, you know, like when you're a little kid, you're just like, oh my god, this crazy thing happened today. And your mom's like, oh my god, what happened? And you're like, there were no chicken nuggets today. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just, I love over dramatic children that think this is the worst it's going to get. And you're like, you don't even pay taxes yet. Like, <laughs> And so the idea that I wrote that and then people at the brush fire read that and were like, yeah. That's that seems good. I was like, are you sure? 
<laughs> Are you unsure of yourself? Yeah, a little. I mean, that's kind of the thing with like comedy, right? Is like you're constantly unsure of yourself. Like, if you're a cocky comedian, you're probably not successful because the whole point is that you're supposed to connect with your audience. So, like, self deprecating humor, right? You're not going to be cocky about how bad you are. Like, there's a certain connection that you have to do with humor where you kind of take yourself down a notch to build everyone up collectively a notch, if that makes sense. So, like, anytime anything I do gets published or I perform it or anything, I'm like, I don't think this is where this needs to be. I think this needs to be hidden in a notebook somewhere. And you all are giving me too much of, like, a good deed here to... To like put me in a journal. I was like, when they sent me the email and they were like, oh, you're gonna be in the edition, I was like, eh, but no, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, this is a joke. I don't know. It's just like a weird thing to be published because you're like, nah, no one takes me that seriously, right? Like, but you're coming from a very different angle. Yeah. You have to be super unsure of yourself to connect to your readers. That's super cool. Yeah. That's kind of the thing too about being in like the English department here at the university is there's not a lot of people that are like obsessed with, um, I wouldn't say not obsessed with humor, but they're just not as big of a community of like screenwriting or specifically that kind of art form. Like there's a few classes you can take and there's great professors I've met through those classes. Um, but a lot of the focus is on fiction and poetry, right? So for me, I always kind of like, it singles me out a little bit which is nice because, like, when you and I were in workshop together, right, we had a majority of fantasy stories, stuff like that. So it's nice to come in with a chapter of, like, dark comedy and be like, literally zero other people are going to have this. But at the same time, I have a feeling that's like, zero other people have this, so this is probably awful. Like, <laughs> I don't know. It's just like a... It's a weird exclusion inclusion kind of thing you know what I mean so like when I said you have to take yourself down to build everyone up that's probably a terrible philosophy for life in general and I would suggest not doing that emotionally but for comedy it works out great okay because like I don't know it's just like a weird thing especially if you're in comedy clubs and stuff like you're all cramped in this tiny dark room you're not going to be like I make so much money like that's not, no one's going to be like, ah, that's hilarious. Like, those poor people just probably worked a nine to five job. And you're like, I just made a hundred dollars telling a joke. Like, you know what I mean? So I think writing's the same way humor wise, um, where it's kind of like this thing where in my personal opinion and the stuff that I've read that I really connect with that's humor wise, people are just like, I am a terrible person, but look at this great writing I did. And so you, like, build yourself down, and you're like, but see how funny I am? And everyone's like, yeah, I guess. And then they get published, and you're like, okay, that sounds great. I don't know why this is published, but it's funny, and I'll read it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like this weird combo of both that somehow works, and I'm not entirely sure how, but it does. You're walking this really weird line <laughs> yeah. between self-confidence and self-deprecation. It's an internal struggle all of the time. Yeah. So was the inspiration for this piece autobiographical or did you just come up with it? Uh, yes and no. I mean, obviously, like, if anybody read the piece, like, it's definitely embellished. Like, um, the events that occur in the story are real. So I did accidentally hit my sixth grade teacher in the face with a dodgeball. <laughs> um, yeah, most, most of the, like, actual like, physical events that occur in the story are real. Um, but, like, like I said, the idea of, a, of an over-dramatic, over-embellishing, like, sixth grader talking to their future self was really, like, the core of the comedy part. So, clearly, it's embellished for a reason, but, like, the events themselves are, are very autobiographical, yeah. <laughs> okay. And what was the part of the story that you feel like you like the most? Like, is there any part that you thought was particularly strong that you really, really vibe with? Um, so I've read this story a couple of different places. Um, so I had to read it for the class that I wrote it for in front of a group. And it played way better than I thought it was going to. 
Um, and people really laughed at the line where it says something about like, I think I was like dodging and weaving or something, or like I was actually like winning in our team was winning in the dodgeball game or whatever. And I just have a very single short choppy sentence that just says like, you were killing it. And it's very like aggressive to come from like a tiny sixth grader, I think is maybe why people laughed at it. I don't know, but it, it caught me by surprise the first time I read it, that people really laughed at that line. And I was like, that wasn't my plan, but I'm glad that that got a laugh. And then when I read it at the magazine release party at Bebo, um, that part didn't get a laugh and it didn't, a different part got a laugh. So that it's kind of interesting to me to read it with two communities that are very art centered but they both had very different reactions to the story. And I thought that was super interesting. And so now that one line is kind of my favorite because I don't know why some people really like it and some people didn't like it as much. But Okay. Was there a part of that that's kind of the opposite? Or is there a part that you don't like about it? I mean, I so this was the first time I ever really wrote in second person before. That was another reason why I was shocked that it got published because I was like, there's no way. There's somebody else that's definitely written the word you better than I have. Like, there can't just be, right? Like, there's got to be somebody out there. So that kind of caught me by surprise. Um, I've tried to kind of turn it into a trilogy a little bit and do two other partially autobiographical things from different grades um, that I was in, different events. And I've tried to write them in second person, and it's not working out as well. So I would personally say that story specifically... I like that it's in second person because it's the first time I did it and it succeeded. And now I, for some reason, cannot figure out how to like recreate that. But maybe just sixth grade was the sweet spot for the you. I don't know. (laughs) Yeah. What's happening with those other two? Is there like a specific difficulty you're having or? Um, So one of them, I'm trying to do different grades. I don't want to stick in in one part of my life, Um, but it's all going to be in elementary school, hopefully. Um, so the one I started writing and I'm kind of in the editing process is from third grade. And I think that same like over dramatic voice just doesn't quite work as well. Cause it's almost like, like the narrator's too young, maybe. I think that might be the problem. At least that's a problem that I'm picking up on right now. Um, either that or I just have to make it really much more heroic than the other piece to really will juxtapose the grade um but that's kind of where that one's at right now and then the other one I think it's from first grade which I've barely started really working on that one I kind of have the frame for it but I haven't really put it together yet and that one I have have no idea where that one's gonna go so that's really the issue for that but hopefully they'll eventually work out to the same as this one nice do you plan on submitting them when they're done uh maybe i don't know we'll see right now i don't really like them at all and i might get to the point of trashing them and starting over again which i always get to that point and then hate that i trash things because i'm like oh you could have salvaged that but yeah Yeah. right everyone goes through that um yeah so i don't know if they'll ever if they'll ever be submitted or they'll just be for me to have as a trilogy and be like look at these crazy things you went through as a kid (laughs) (laughs) okay so, to get, like, metaphysical for a minute. Sure. What inspires you to write? Ooh. Hmm. That's a really good question. Um, Is there, like, a touchstone of your personality you like or something that you've observed that you're really interested in? I mean, I was raised a lot on, like, family stories, so... Anytime I have a, I come from a very big family. My dad is the youngest of six kids and there's like 30 grandkids that I'm one of. So anytime we sat down for like a weekend dinner, there's a huge table of people telling random stories, right? So just the idea of storytelling in general, I was very implemented in from a very young age. And I don't think I realized how beneficial it was until I started doing it myself on paper And I was like, wow, this is really hard. I don't know how these people did it casually at a Sunday dinner. Like, this is, how do you, what? Like, how did they get all of this together? Um, So I think that's probably a 
part, especially for this kind of story, because it's from my childhood. I think that's definitely something that I drew from is just how stories were told by like my dad or any of my relatives about when they were younger and how they kind of over dramatized and things like that. I think that was definitely an inspiration for this piece specifically. Um, but in general, I just like, I mean, I'm a cinema minor, so film storytelling is like a really big deal for me. Um, I'm kind of obsessed right now, inspiration-wise, with this New Zealand, New Ze- New Zealand, New Zealand uh, director named Taika Waititi. So he just made that new movie um, called Jojo Rabbit, about like the Hitler Youth kid whose imaginary friend is Hitler. Um, so that's kind of like a wild thing, but it's it was a really great movie and it was done really well. Um, he also has done, he did Thor Ragnarok, actually, so he directed that movie, which are two very different movies, um, but I don't know, just the way that he tells stories visually and what he writes, I'm kind of, like, obsessed with him right now, and I'm trying to figure out how he does it, so I would say maybe that's a little bit of inspiration for me, but he's just, like, he's a gem. Are you interested in making films? Uh, kind of, sort of, so, in the past two weeks um wolfpack comedy club on campus we've been filming some sketches for our upcoming sketch show um usually i'm mainly into the writing process so writing the sketches is like all me i love doing that um but i didn't really get around to writing anything for the show this semester so i've been helping a lot more with the filming end and the editing end um which i always knew how to do but i've just been more immersed in it recently and so i think I've become a little bit more obsessed with it, Um, especially the sketches that we have filmed are really, really funny. Um, So we did a sketch written written by Ash and Midnick, and then two sketches written by um, Vincent Rendon and um, Chase and Scott, and they were all really good sketches. And so I was kind of glad to help out with it from a visual standpoint and see how we could like bring someone's sketch on a screen that whole process of moving paper to film was kind of fun even for like a three minute dumb comedy sketch it was fun so that might be something like further down the road I'll get more into but usually it's just the writing part of film that I'm really obsessed with okay so it's kind of something you might want to do but for now it's just kind of proximity yeah, I mean, I think the main reason is I'm just not good at the film part yet. So I'm like, let's leave it to the people who are, and I'll stick to this typing part. Okay, well, something to learn. Yeah, yeah, something, exactly. Something to dive into. Yeah. Okay, so when you do write, what does that process look like for you? Because everybody has like wildly different ways of going about it. Is there a particular way they like to do things, conceptualize, like... Take me through a day of writing for you. Uh, so it definitely depends on the medium. So if I'm writing specifically a stand-up set, that's going to be a lot different than if I'm writing a short story. Um, so usually with a short story, I try, <laughs> I try so hard to do some pre-writing. If that ever happens, I will be shocked. Um, <laughs> but that's always <laughs> something I really try to do. Um, I really am kind of... In my own personal writing, I really am focused on characterization and character arcs. So I really try to pre-write and figure out what I want the character to do throughout the plot. Um, But I don't really care that much about the details of the plot. The main points are obviously important because I need to know the beginning, middle, and end of a story, right? But wherever that character takes the the middle points of those stages is what I care about. Um, So usually for short story... I'll kind of run around with the plot and the character for a few days, figure out who the character is, you know, how different are they from me, too, because if I tend to write, like, the story for The Brush Fire was very autobiographical, right? Um, I don't always tend to write autobiographical. That was kind of new for me. So um, if they're not autobiographical, I have to see maybe, like, what parts of me do I want in the character, what parts of me should I add to the character if I want to? Things like that. Um, I really try not to add myself into my stories, but it's happened sometimes. Um, And then from there, 
I once I have the character pinned down, I can usually figure out what where is this character going to take me through the story, which sounds like a really pretentious thing. But a lot of professors have told me that. And I think it's very true that the character takes you places. I don't think the writer themselves are like character. You are doing this. I think the character's like, I this is what I should do. And you're like, all right, let's do it. Mm-hmm. And you go down that hole and sometimes it works and sometimes it's a disaster. And so you have to go save those three chapters that you wrote or whatever somewhere else for a different story and try again. And then eventually you have a weird sixth grade diary entry <laughs> that you submit <laughs> to the brush fire. Um, but it definitely, it definitely depends on the medium. If I'm, if I'm writing a sketch or stand up, like obviously that's much more comedy based. So the jokes are more reliant, right? So I would say the most similarities are going to be between sketches in, in short stories because you have to have a beginning, middle, and end in a sketch, regardless of what it's about. Um, it does follow that kind of, that age-old uh, like triangle that we always talk about. Um, it definitely follows that. Even though it doesn't seem like they do, they do. So you still have to kind of start with the same basis that you would as a short story, but obviously you're relying more on the jokes. So I would say the editing process for each medium is really where it gets different because clearly you have to punch one up if it's not funny or whatever. But with a short story, you can be like, maybe this just isn't where I want to go. Maybe I just don't want to be funny in this one. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it definitely depends on the process, but that's usually... That's usually my process. I would love to be better at the process and do like a heavy pre-writing and a heavy editing and like all of the stuff you're supposed to do, but that never happens. So <laughs> it sounds like you're doing what's good for you. Which is right. Good. Yeah. Okay. So is there anything else that we haven't talked on that you would like to just mention or talk about by yourself, your writing, about sketches? <laughs> I learned this thing from a documentary, which sounds, again, very pretentious, <laughs> but it has actually helped me a lot. Um, there's a very famous comedy writer. His name's Robert Smigel, and he always had this thing about don't bury the joke. So it's kind of like in journalism, right? Don't bury your lead. So a lot of what he says is like, if the punchline of your joke is X, right? Like title the sketch that. You don't have to hide what the joke is in a sketch, is essentially what I'm saying. So like... um an example would be the sketch he he did. He helped a couple of people write. Uh, it's called Waiters Who Were Nauseated by Food. That is the whole punchline of that sketch. And that is the title of that sketch. There is no like candy coating of what's going to happen in that sketch. You know exactly where we're going. I think that's really like the main thing I've learned writing sketches myself and things that we've kind of talked about in Comedy Club. It's just like there's no need to hide the joke because you want it to be funny. Like, don't work around the joke. Just just work with the joke. Thank you so much for listening. You can find our other artist spotlights, as well as our Brushfire audiobook series, at unrbrushfire.org.